welcome to Vista Talks, interesting discussions with interesting people from all around the world. I am your host for today, Maria Roja, and I'm delighted to be joined by Maria Mateos. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. Maria has a proven track record in expanding relationships with valued clients, particularly in the pharmaceutical, clinical, and medical devices field. She's an expert developing and establishing strategic alliances and has a lot of experience managing complex localization projects across diverse sectors. Maria is a strategic account director in life sciences at Visatech. There, she specializes in nurturing and growing strategy accounts with the, within the dynamic field of life sciences. In 2023, Maria was honored with the Most Valuable Player Award for her outstanding dedication and contribution to her profession. Well, Maria, you're very welcome again. Let's move on as I have a number of areas that I would like to discuss with you today. Hey. Let's start. Uh, what are some of the unique challenges of localization content in the life sciences industry compared to other industries? Well, um, I believe the main difference with other industries is that life sciences, uh, here there's no room for mistakes. It's a highly regulated industry and poor translated content could end up very easily in a lawsuit, for example. Um, this industry is evolving all the time with new discoveries, new technologies. So the linguistic team you select needs to be up to date with new trends in order to translate accurately. Um, this vertical involves translation of highly technical, specialized terminology. And while this may sound complex, um, in my experience, there's something that is even more difficult, and that is patient-facing materials. This type of content needs to be written in a way that is understandable and reassuring for patients. This means turning this very, very complex content into plain language especially when we are talking about medical conditions or medical options, treatment options. Um, let's take, for example, a clinical trial. When mm -hmm. patients need to sign an informed consent form, here it's crucial that the patients understand the purpose of the trial, the procedures they are going through, the risks and the potential outcomes of the study when they give their consent. This kind of content may require additional translation steps like back translation, reconciliation, and sometimes even cognitive debriefing to ensure best quality possible. I mean, there's really no room for mistakes here. Um, and mistakes can bring serious consequences, including issues related to patient safety or regulatory approval. And I know, I know quality is always important across all of the industries, but in life sciences, it's crucial. Not to leave aside that it's a very fast paced environment when it comes to turnaround times for translation. This can be very aggressive compared to other industries. Um, here, consequences, as I said, can be very, very serious. For example, a late delivery of a translation may lead to compromise the enrollment of a patient in a clinical trial. And as sad as it may sound, this trial may be their only chance. Um, so what I, propose or try to do to overcome these challenges is try to find a team with linguistic expertise, with cultural awareness, regulatory compliance, and a patient-centered approach. Well, so then uh, if we make like a little summary to our audience, you've been saying that, that some of the unique challenges are regulation, specialized terminology, knowing which is your target, which is always super important, but in this case more because we need to make sure that they are under understanding what we're telling them and that it's a very fast pacing environment. Was that it? Yes, exactly. 
Perfect. And when looking to improve your life science localization program, I know you already said a couple of things, but what are the some of the key areas that uh, everyone should focus on? I think first thing to do is to determine the market expansion. This needs to be done by the sponsor, of course. And based on that, we can develop and create a localization strategy. Um, from the linguistic per perspective, we would need subject matter experts for each vertical. And here it's not just speaking about life sciences in general anymore. Um, I would go for teams specialized in clinical, another team for medical devices, even animal health falls mm -hmm. on the umbrella of under the umbrella of life sciences. So you need a specialized team for each sub-industry. Uh, these teams need to be up to date with regulations again in each target market. Um, Consistency is another key point here. To ensure consistency across your localized content in multiple languages, I would recommend having glossaries, style guides, and a strong translation memory. And please, I would strongly recommend to keep all these updated. They will save you time and probably costs in the future. And the last one, but to me, one of the most important ones is feedback and communication. And those who work with me know that I am a feedback beggar. Uh, this is not in vain, uh, I promise. It's a learning opportunity, whether it's positive or constructive feedback, both lead to more tailored and client-centric translations. I try to be a partner to my clients, not just a vendor. So the ideal scenario for me is to have open communication, whether it is with an internal localization team or your LSP, but this team needs to fully understand your goals, your expectations, and what success means to the client. And while there are certain SOPs we have in place in our operations teams or any operation teams that handles localization for life sciences, I would aim to develop a customized program that goes hand in hand with each client's needs. Mm -hmm. I think everything you said is really interesting, but what it really interests me more is that you were talking about we need to be updated and you're right this is life science industry it's a type of industry that you can know is one thing you need to know what is the last uh regulation that came up and how is that going to affect everything you do so that that's a really great point and a very important one for all our audience. So when we're talking about all these regulatory constraints and technical language uh, that we need to take care of, uh, can you give our audience any tips on how you handle situations where these technical and regular constraints affect the localization process specifically? I would say keeping up to date with relevant regulations in the target markets. Um, and these regulations can change. So this requires constant monitoring. Um, I would say consult legal experts, again, in the target markets. They know how things uh, happen there. And foster collaboration between your teams, the localization team, the legal experts, and the relevant stakeholders. Again, effective communication here is key. So all these resources are aligned and working towards the same goal. Um, there may need to be modifications to your localization program or the processes to accommodate to these regulatory com constraints. This may involve, for example, um, additional review steps or quality controls or compliance checks. Another thing is keeping the localization process documented. And I know this, this can be tough, but for example, a certificate of translation that is delivered together with the translation, this can be very, very valuable for audits or regulatory inquiries. 
and develop a risk mitigation plan in case this doesn't go as expected. I would say have uh, handy some corrective actions or contingency measures uh, at that point. And yes, I guess my approach here would be proactive and comprehensive to ensure regulatory compliance in each market. Communication then would be like the, the main tip, right? Yes, indeed. Okay, well, uh, now let's change. I want to know how do you measure the success of a localization project the life science industry and what metrics can you use to do that? Okay, um, well, life science is different from other verticals. Success in life sciences localization projects is not just about delivering translating translated content. It's about ensuring the highest quality possible, compliance, impact in the target market, and patient safety. So mm. here, what we really want to measure is, first of all, accuracy and quality of translated material. This can be done through linguistic validation, back translation, and even review by subject matter experts, depending on the type of content. Regulatory compliance, again, this is another one that we need to measure, and maybe you can use the number of regulatory approvals or successful submissions. This can be a KPI. You can measure that too. On-time delivery, of course, this really needs to be quantified. Um, as we said, turnaround times can be aggressive, but this really needs to be quantified. Cost efficiency. Um, translation memory savings, content reuse. You can measure how much content has been recycled from previous translations and how this has contributed to save time and costs in the current program. We can use surveys and feedback. This can help to measure, for example, how localized content has impacted patients and healthcare professionals' understanding of the of the study, for example. And I guess in the long term, we can even quantify the impact of localized materials on patient outcomes and healthcare providers' decision making. Again, through surveys, um, and that's that's very interesting. And personally. What I try to do when creating a program and selecting the KPIs we will be measuring is to understand what success means to each client, what they are looking for, what are their goals, goals. and try to define these try KPIs to together, creating a custom-made programs that work specifically for them. Yeah, I think a very important thing that you mentioned that we hadn't talked before was that patient patient it's like at the end of everything you guys do at life science um, localization so this is super important not just trying to sell something and if we don't do it right then they might not buy it it's not like a product we're not losing sales we're talking about a purse or an animal as you said but someone a living life behind you know and we need to make sure that their safety is first Exactly. Yes. I mean, in other industries, which are important and have their complexities, complexities too, um, it's different because patients' lives may not be at risk. And this is current and daily procedures in life sciences, you know, yeah. with every... Every content, every single word you translate, uh, patient safety may be at risk. Yeah, and you were talking about regulations, and uh, this is something that I don't know how you guys do it because there is different regulations wherever you go. So more localized than that is like nothing. <laughs> and 
world of regulation changes so fast and it remains at the forefront of the life science and healthcare sector as we were talking. So I've been spending some time at this industry events. Can you share any insights? Well, the life sciences vertical is one of the most regulated industries in the world. And this can make localization a little bit more complex than in other industries. Um, there are local regulations that can affect translation workflows. For example, EU CTR, the European Union Clinical Trials Regulation, which aims to add additional transparency and patient safety in clinical operations. So some of the new requirements are one single authorization procedure, uh, one uh, single European Union portal for submitting clinical trials, one single decision, and of course, the increased of transparency, meaning the publication of all clinical trial protocols and results needs to be published. And all these aim to add an additional layer of protection for the rights of clinical trial subjects. But this also has an impact in the localization processes because clinical trials information needs to be available in the official languages of the countries where the study is conducted. Um, sponsors need to keep records of all the translations, including the date of the translation, the name of the translator, and any changes performed during the translation processes. They also need to publish, and this is very interesting, and this is something that to me it's very important. They need to publish lay summaries. And for the translation of lay summaries, we'll need highly specialized linguists to ensure accurate and compliant translations in plain language. And this is the key. Plain language is translating, as I said before, those very complex terms into a language that anyone can understand. Yep. So the localization workflow can be affected. Sometimes it requires, again, back translation or in-country review. So all in all, these are uh, new requirements that turn uh, translation standards to be more strict regarding quality and timeliness. The localization teams need to be familiar with compliance and legal considerations too. Yeah, you were just talking about EU CTR. Uh, is there anything that we tell our audience about MDR, medical devices regulation, or which regulations compete specifically to localization? Well, yes, um, it has, MDR has also an impact in translation workflows. MDR uh, broadens the scope of medical devices, now including software for medical uses and medical devices accessories. So there is a stricter approval criteria now, which includes low risk medical devices that in the past, may not have been regulated. Oh, so this means stupid. that content such as labeling, instructions for use, and technical documentation needs to be translated. And once more, these translations must be precise, clear, and aligned with the device's intended use. And this is not all, because with the evolving nature of medical device regulations, translators need to be ready to update translations as regulations change. So it's it, it can be complex, but with the right partner, it can be done. And when it comes to LSPs, I would say proper training on confidentiality regulations like HIPAA are crucial to protect patients' personal information, for example. And LSPs or your internal localization team should also work in accordance with several ISO regulations, 
Some of them cover, for example, quality standards, as well as information security. So my takeaways oh. here would be make sure your localization team is on top of the regulations in force um, to yeah. ensure compliance, market access, and of course, patient safety. Yeah, I talk lots of things, but mainly we're telling everyone who is into this industry that they need whoever they work with to be, be updated uh, with everything they do and make sure they're like re-reviewing everything, you know, uh, because at the end there is like safety, at, uh, you know, at, on the other side. So we need to make sure that they are understanding what we're saying. This is not only something for doctors, let's say. No, no, exactly. Um, MDR even suggests or proposes uh, surveillance for post-market. So that means you need to keep an eye on the products you have in the market and make necessary adjustments. Is there anything else you would like to share with our audience today before we go? Well, if you're planning to launch a life sciences product in a new market, whether it's medical devices, vaccines, or if you're running a clinical trial and you'd like to reach a more diverse patient population, increase patient engagement and support the participation of patients in different regions, across different languages, just make sure your localization team or partner is on top of all these regulations. Keep track of multiple versions of documents, amendments, and updates. This can be challenging. Um, check that source files, um, mainly patient-facing content is written in plain language. So the localization process is smooth. Remember short sentences, clear ideas, simple terms. And let's don't forget that the ultimate goal here is to save patients' lives. So if you have any doubts about your current program or if there's any key ideas you'd like to improve, I'm always happy to discuss this and happy to help. Great. I guess I can find you on LinkedIn then. Yes. So, well, that was the of today's show. Maria, thank you so much for being our guest. Uh, we learned so much about the life science industry localization. Uh, I just want to tell our audience, please make sure to tune in again to see and or to listen to the next Visa Talk show where we will be discussing more interesting topics, interesting people from all around the world. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Bye.